إلى الله مرجعكم إلى الله مرجعكم وهو على كل شيء قدير. To Allah is your return, and He is most capable of everything. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, interesting video today. We're gonna check out Andrew Tate's interview on the Piers Morgan Uncensored show in Romania. Of course, we are not concerned with the whole video here. We're simply gonna watch the part where Andrew Tate speaks about Islam. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, check out the links in the description box to further support Bobby's perspective. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Isn't even significant. I'm only asking if you think it's moral. Do I think it's moral? Because you speak in such a morally self-righteous way now, do you think that that was moral? Well, I wasn't religious back then, but let me sit and analyze. Because you're now, you, you converted no, to I'm, Islam. Yeah, correct. You're a Muslim. Correct. They have, you know, a code of, of behavior. Do you think that that fell short of I that have code? to answer as a professional. And as a professional, I would say, do, judging by my current code, no, I do not think that women being naked on the internet is moral. However, there is like- So you made money immorally. You can admit that. It's nuanced like all things, Pierce. At the time I was atheistic, I know that some of my girls talked men away from suicide. A lot of men are ridiculously lonely. Mm. I would also say a lot of the lessons I know about men and how they think and how lonely and sad they can be and how difficult life is as a man actually came from that era because I saw a lot of very successful men with a wife and with kids and with money mm. pouring their heart out to some 20 year old they never sure. met about how sad they were. I learned a lot about the world and I know that a lot of suicide was prevented and I made a lot of women millionaires. But would I do it now? No. However, I'm in a very different situation now. I'm a different person. I'm religious. I'm also extremely financially successful. Please understand, Piers, I come from Marsh Farm Luton. I came from one of the worst areas inside of the UK. Mm. I could have stabbed someone. Every one of my friends were breaking into cars, breaking into houses. Most of my friends were in jail. What did I do? I promoted accounts on the internet. You didn't made sell, money. Didn't you sell crack. Didn't sell yeah. drugs, didn't rob anyone, didn't shoot anyone. And now, because I am successful, I'm gonna be held to this moral standard by people who grew up in fancy homes with white picket fences and went to private schools. Well, no, actually, I am from Marsh no, Farm no, no, Luton, no. and the biggest crime I committed was completely legally promoting internet profiles. Right. There are people around me who did far actually, you're only gonna be held, for far less. No, no, you're only gonna be held to the standard of the religion you converted to, which you've already said- When you said, take the Shahada, well, all on, your former Which you've already erased. said would look at that as immoral. When you take the Shahada, all of your former sins are erased. And I actually encourage you to find the light and convert to Islam. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, the clip cuts off there. I wish it would have continued. However, this is only part one, so I'm sure tomorrow or the day after we're going to see part two uploaded on the Piers Morgan channel as well. That being said, it is great to see that Andrew Tate is distancing himself from his former webcam business and that he says that nowadays, as a Muslim, he wouldn't do it. However, when he gets pressed by Piers Morgan and Piers Morgan essentially wants him to admit, but it is immoral what you have done, isn't it? It is, of course, hypocritical coming from a P.S. Morgan, but you have to understand that the way Andrew Tate conducted himself was the right way to go hands down, because he cannot sit there and give those liberals any talking ground. He cannot give them any points, so to speak. He cannot admit defeat, if you will. Andrew Tate understands he wouldn't do this as a Muslim, and hence it is immoral. If it is haram, if Allah said it is haram, it is haram. There's nothing to talk about. However, he did it correct here because he doesn't have to justify himself in front of Piers Morgan. As said, Piers Morgan is not a saint himself, so why would now Andrew Tate sit there and say, yeah, you know what, Piers, actually, yes, it was immoral, I regret it, etc., etc. No, you don't give those liberals any talking ground whatsoever. They never come with purely genuine questions. Of course, they like to appear as objective, non-biased, but it is, of course, bunk. They want 
want to expose you one way or another and therefore you cannot show weakness. Well, I am actually genuinely concerned by the fact that I've been banned from schools when I do nothing but preach masculine strength and excellence. But then if you actually understand how the society is going and how the world works and all the insanity they're trying to push on all of us, I can understand why they banned me because I speak the truth. That is something that we have to understand here. Andrew Tate acted correctly. He doesn't have to confess his sins in front of the high council of Piers Morgan over here. He doesn't owe anybody anything. For us as Muslims, it is beautiful to see that he admits, of course, those things are not something that you should do as a Muslim. And moreover, in the end, he invites Piers Morgan to Islam. When you take the Shahada, all of your former sins are erased. And I actually encourage you to find the light and convert to Islam. This is in accordance with Islam. This is in accordance with the Sunnah. This is following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. 1400 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula, there was a blind man named Abdullah ibn Abbas. One day, Abdullah ibn Abbas decided to consult the Prophet Muhammad about a particular verse of the Quran. Upon arriving at the Prophet's house, Abdullah entered and found the Prophet Muhammad in his living quarters. However, the Prophet's wife was also present in the room. Abdullah was blind, so he couldn't see the Prophet's wife. However, the Prophet still instructed his wife to leave the room, showcasing the modesty that Islam upholds. I look around the world and I see that our Ummah is finding it hard to even just lower their gaze for the opposite gender, which is quite embarrassing when the Prophet Muhammad set the modesty standard for our Ummah to follow. Us humans have two choices when dealing with problems. Option one, sit around and complain about the problem or option two, solve the problem with a solution. You may be wondering, how do we solve this problem? The answer is education. Think about it this way. If you are unaware that the current habits you are doing are harmful, how can you change those habits? However, if you are constantly in contact with people who are informing you on the dangers of set habits, you then have the chance to change. That's why at Dawagram we are here to educate, inform and connect our Ummah on the world's first halal social media platform.